Father to join, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. And with your bread of life, that's how I come alive, that's how I change my world. Father to join, from your spirit to my spirit, I am lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive, that's how I change my world. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hair, what hair is your name? Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Say, Father, to joy. here <laughs> we are able to finally launch <laughs> and do this uh podcast another podcast another day that god has given us to come together and to um and to worship him uh to praise him and to acknowledge him amen all right so thank you everyone for tuning in and liking our videos and commenting as always we pray thank you for joining the sup with him bible study discussion and podcast um and we hope that you all are moving closer to christ and becoming inspired and becoming more encouraged um, um to get to know who the father is know who the son is as well as the holy spirit and how he's working in your life all right all right. All right. So today's reading and discussion of the word is going to be on Ephesians 4, chapter 4, 11 through 16. And we're going to discuss about maturity or maturity. All right. So we're going to start with the reading. Um, you want to read it or do you want me to read it? Um, first we got to pray. Okay. Lead us into prayer then. Okay. Father God, we thank you for us, um, being obedient, even though when sometimes things can get hard and we don't understand why these things are hard, but we thank you for allowing us to be able to dissolve the problem without mummering and complaining and fussing and groaning. Um, we thank you for this occasion right now as we bring forth your word. Lord, be an enlightenment in our mouths, in our tongues. You have us to say what you want us to say, not what we want to say. And hopefully we we'll edify and, 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 and reach those that need to be reached and teach those that need to be teach. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm coming from Ephesians 4 and I'm going, I can hear you now, but I keep 11 through Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 16. It's kind of, my internet is kind of shaky y'all. So y'all just hold on. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to start back again. So Christ himself gave the possible, uh, the apostles, apostles, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of service that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth 
by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceit scheming. Mm -hmm. Instead, speaking the truth and love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Amen. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every support, ligament, growths, and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Amen. Amen to that. Okay. So let me just um, go to the background of this scripture where it's um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, again, in the New Testament, who's writing to the Ephesian church and he is writing to the Ephesian church because um, they have seen that there were um, at that time, of course, they were they were Jews. And this is the first this is the first generation, as you would say, of. Um, it's OK, it's the first generation of uh, Christians um, who are with the apostles. And um, so Paul is writing to the Ephesian church and he is writing to them because they still have been false doctrines, um, false teachings have got into the Ephesian church and- um, Huh? Disobedience. Yes. But um, like I said, false doctrines, false teachings have gotten to the Ephesian church and people or, or Jew, Jews at that time were coming into the body of Christ. But at this point, um, they have not taken away, they have not done away with um, certain uh, practices and mundane rituals <laughs> that they have been keeping and as well as um, some parts of their culture that they have been retaining, but understanding that when you come to the body of Christ, there are certain things that you have to do away with. And so at this point, they have not matured from those things that they have learned to accept Christ and his fullness. And so this is what Paul is saying to the Ephesian church at the time when he is writing this letter. Now, he says this in verse 12. We talked about um, equip, uh, let me see, let me just go back and read it. He says, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Now, if you go and read um, verse 11, it talks about, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service. So the equipping of the saints, and we've heard this many times before, where the equipping of the saints are equipped with um, gifts and a special, uh, special gifts that are given by way of the Holy Spirit. And so he equips his people um, for works of service. And that equipping could be through, through faith. The equipping could be through teaching. The equipment could be through um, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of teaching, the gifts of um, the, the many gifts that are listed. <laughs> and um, I forgot what book that is, but um, he equips his people. And so going on to verse 12, um, for works of service, meaning for the body of Christ, for the kingdom of heaven. And so that the body of Christ may be built up because the only way that you can truly build up the body of Christ is by one, um, doing away with those things that we are so used to in this world. Um, for example, it could be like, we may be used to going out with our friends and going out to the clubs and things of that nature. And, um, you know, there may be a time where the Holy Spirit may be speaking to you to stay home or to stay in. And um, 
your body is now a living sacrifice for the kingdom of heaven and for the works of service for Christ. And, you know, going out and doing the same things that you used to do, you're now reborn again. And so these works of service that God has given unto you by way of his Holy Spirit is for, is for Christ. And so, and it is to build up the body. It is to build up the spiritual body of Christ. It is to build up the teachings, the principles, um, these things of that nature that, um, that is for works of the kingdom. Do you want to respond to that, Dora? Um, so I'm going to back up a little bit and I just want to kind of like focus on that word equip. Uh huh. Um, that came out to me, the word equipped, um, equipped, um, means supply with the necessary items for a particular purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, when we are, when God equips us, he equips us with the things that we need. He equips us with, like you were saying, the Holy spirit gives, mm-hmm. Um, the callings on our life, he equipped us with healing. He mm-hmm. equipped us, us with um, casting out devils and demons. He equips us um, with the necessary things that we need in order for this journey. Um, he does not have us lacking, and you do not have to ask because everything he provides for us is within this Holy spirit. So I just wanted to elaborate on the word equipped a -hmm. little bit to let the people know that when you are on this journey, everything comes in a package. Everything comes in a package. You are not lacking anything. It's a package deal. Yeah. Um, So that's what I, I just want to elaborate on that um, a little bit more. Um, Yeah. No, that's so true. And and it, and it says, is to continue on in, in verse 12, um, that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the son of God and become mature. So you, you're right, you, the equipping of his people, equipping of the saints, equipping of his people, um, unity and faith. And that's so important because a lot of people, you know, um, I think they have this misunderstanding of once, like, look, once you, once you have surrendered to Christ, it is, it is not your works. It is not your strength. It is not your courage. I mean, yes, you have to, you have to, um, you have to put some action in to what God's will is. But 90% is him. It's all, it's right. all him. And it's right. like you, you have to do it within faith because um, you have to do it within faith. And that is the unity. And, the, and faith is so important because you, whatever, God equips us with faith. He equips us for works of service. If you're a preacher, if you're a teacher, you're a pastor, you're a prophet, um, you're an evangelist, he equips us with those, uh, with those gifts in order to do his works. But you also have to have faith on top of that and have faith that this is going to happen because God is going to do it for me. And well, he's going to do it for us because he's talking about the unity where he's talking about the arms and the limbs and the, uh, what do they call it? Um, the arms and the limbs of the body of Christ. Uh, it has to be done in faith. It has to be, it has to be done in faith as well as knowledge of God. So the knowledge of God is like, um, you don't want to be, um, what's the word I want to use? You don't want to be beguiled, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. like you don't want to be, um, tricked or, or be hoodwinked as we say, tricked, bamboozled, hoodwinked. Um, you have to stand firm in your faith with Christ 
So that way the trickery and the cunningness of men or the cunningness of people so that they won't have you second guess your faith and wavering your faith, you know, in what Christ teaches us, you know, and what Christ has equipped us with. Because a lot of times the enemy will try to sway you and they will have you thinking that, okay, well, yes, God has given me these gifts. He has equipped me for the work that he wants me to do according to his will. And he spoke to me about it. But along the way, you know, the enemy will come and they will try to throw you off the path by saying, well, no, um, I don't think I should do this Bible study because he didn't say this, that, and the third, but he has already equipped you. A lot of times we forget, you know, what God has done and we get so distracted by the patterns of this world. So just wanted to reach out on that because um, anytime that God is, is equipping you for works of service, you have to do it in faith. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say? Um, Go ahead, girl, speak your mind. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, I am going to speak. What I'm saying is that if when God equips you with the works of service and you may get swayed Mm -hmm. by the enemy, that this is not what you're supposed to do. Hmm. And then sometimes because the enemy, they'll say, well, no, you're not, you don't have the strength. You don't have the courage to do, um, what God has given you to do. So you may second guess that, Hmm. but you have to remember the things that God has, has given you what he has told you, uh, what, what you can do and what I have given you and what I have already spoken over you. That's what I was saying. Sometimes he does not speak. You're absolutely right. Sometimes he won't speak. Sometimes he will just place something in the hands of another. Your audio. Say that again. Your audio. (laughs) Maybe you should have done your tablet. I don't like. This. Okay, say it again. Say it again. Here. Sometimes God will place another in your life. Um, that's not what I said either. What did I say? Lord have mercy. Sometimes God will not speak. He will have somebody else to do what you thought He was going to do with you, and you're not sure if you should. Not so much right on that person's coattail. That's not what I'm saying, but believe that it's my internet. It's all right. Just keep, just repeat. Go ahead. Okay. I know you're going to edit this. Thank God. Um, So what I'm saying is sometimes God would, would use a certain person. Yeah. It could could be a random person. Sometimes he will not speak to you. Sometimes he will speak to that person. Yeah. And bless you that way. And you're not sure if you're supposed to, like I said, not ride the person's coattail because there's no coattail riding. But what I'm saying is that you might not believe that that God has sent that person. You see what I'm saying? Through, and that's where your faith has to kick in. That's when your faith has to be, you have to rely on faith because he's not always going to, like you say, he's not always going to talk to us all the, he does talk. I'm not saying he does not talk, but sometimes we, okay. So I believe you were saying that, um, God will speak to us, not directly to us sometimes, but he will speak to like a friend or a family member and let you know that this is what he wants you to do. And it will be confirmation. It's right. just like, just like how, when, um, when you called me and God told you to tell me that, you know, um, to do the, don't give up on your gifts and to do the Bible study. Right. right. 
And so, yeah, he speaks, he will, he will use, um, utilize who he, who he pleases to, absolutely, absolutely. to, um, give his message to his children or to his right. people. Yes. I agree with that. Right, right. Um, a lot. And, um, when I'm, yeah, they definitely, is that what you were saying? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, All right. So, um, um, so the church of Ephesians has to move. We have to move in this form of maturity that God is saying is to, um, because in actually, because I gave you the verse earlier on Hebrews, um, five, 12, we probably won't have time to go over it, but, um, it talks about the milk drinking of, of, uh, of milk and, um, you don't, you're not eating solid foods. You're drinking milk because you are still a baby and you're still immature in the body of Christ because you have not put away with the things of the world. You have not put away with the things that you have learned um, before coming to Christ. 